between Juan Diaz and Jose Miguel Cotto. Diaz is a fighter who has held a welterweight title belt for, a, or excuse me, a lightweight title belt for a couple of years now, even though he's still only 22 years old. An all-action fighter who wants to throw 80 or 90 punches around, but Cotto is by far the more powerful of the two. There's a six-year age advantage for Diaz, a height advantage of one inch, an arm length advantage of an inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in within a pound of the 135-pound lightweight limit, and tonight, unofficially, Juan Diaz has gone up to 149, and Makoto has also put on the same amount of weight to go up to 148. Rules of the bout with the pound-for-pound -pound leader in ringside scoring, Harold Letterman. <laughs> the Juan Diaz, Jose Miguel Cotto fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see in your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. of the younger brother being able to move ahead of him. He had an 18-0 record when Miguel Cotto turned pro. Um, so it's understandable. And I think uh, what happened, Jim, was that Delaware was fading from the picture uh, with, with top rank, and they felt they needed a Latino superstar eventually in the hopes of replacing Delaware. They went to the Olympics to find somebody like that, and Cotto was the guy they came up with, Miguel Cotto. Now here's Jose Cotto, older brother of, and just to emphasize the point one more time, an unbeaten fighter, 28 wins, no losses, and fights in a somewhat similar style to his younger brother. If you've seen Miguel on HBO, and you saw him right there, incidentally, in a dark blue pinstripe suit, uh, Miguel has a sensational left hook to the body, and he tends to wear opponents down with a relatively slow grinding pace and hammer them to the body until they submit. Jose has done much the same thing in his long series of victories. Here's the guy who may not have quite as much power, but what a dynamic fighter he is. Juan Diaz. Lennox Lewis, this is a fighter who is, at age 22, trying to balance a full-time college pursuit, the desire ultimately to go to law school, all of the other various factors that go into being 22, already a world champion, making money, etc., etc. It's not easy to keep your focus, is it? Definitely not easy to keep your focus, and it's important to keep your focus at this time. You don't want outside interferences to really disturb what you're trying to achieve. And going to school, I take my hat off to you, you know, it's hard to go to school plus box at the same time. So he, best, he definitely knows what he wants and what he wants to accomplish out there. He's well, about halfway through undergraduate school, but with a good academic average, Larry. Yeah, well, there's not likely to be a whole lot of outside interferences. He still lives at home, and his greatest prize since winning the title, he now has his own room. <laughs> this is a man that loves to fish. That's right. Lives at home, got his own room, fishes in the Galveston Bay. No girlfriend, though those of you who are out, out watching now, right now, could apply. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Palace and Wynn Las Vegas, it's World Championship Boxing brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and Don King Productions. Sponsored by Corona Extra, brought to you in association with main events for this bout. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges at ringside scoring the contest will be Bill Graham, Paul Smith, and Glenn Trowbridge. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action inside the ring, Kenny Bayless. And now, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA. Lightweight! Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver, official weight, 134 pounds. His professional record is a perfect one, consisting of 27 bouts, 27 victories, including 19 knockouts. Namas de Caballeros de Cajuas, Puerto Rico, the undefeated challenger, Jose Miguel Cotto. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, official weight, 135 pounds. 
also a perfect professional record consisting of 28 bouts, 28 victories, including 14 knockouts from Houston, Texas, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA lightweight champion of the world, Juan, the baby boy. Okay, ring center. Okay, gentlemen, punch is thrown in this area where we consider clean. Clean will be considered in this area. Now, guys, with all the rules in the dressing room, I want you to keep the fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch gloves. This is likely to be as much or more about who can take more than who can give more. Elaborate for me, Larry, in, in the sense that both fighters are going to throw a lot and land a lot? Yeah, they're going to be close to each other, throwing a lot of punches. Uh, and as the fight goes on, it's going to become a battle of attrition. Diaz opens with a hook to the body. And already, Cotto is unloading a lot of punches. He has begun to throw from the opening bell, starting to use his jab to try to penetrate Diaz's guard. Diaz has responded by basically focusing to the body early, Lennox. Definitely. Uh, focusing on the body early, definitely. He, what he's really doing is just testing him out, trying different punches, seeing where he can actually have a, fe have a good effect. And there's not too much you can learn until you go out there and throw a lot of punches in the first round. Diaz has had a nine-month stretch of inactivity, the longest of his career. Looks a little bit looser around the belly than in previous appearances in front of us, at least. Cotto, who appears to be in terrific shape, has already thrown a lot of punches in round one. Now you see exactly what Larry Merchant was talking about. These guys are going to get closer and closer to one another, and they're both going to throw. There's a hard right hand over the top by Diaz. Cotto's instinct is to want to retaliate immediately. He throws a right and a left. Now lands his own right hand over the top. This is, this is power boxer punching. And Diaz hasn't really gotten off in the first round the way we've seen him in previous bouts with that prolific style. Either Cotto's early aggression has put Diaz a little bit more firmly into his own envelope, or Diaz simply has decided that he isn't going to throw 90 punches around anymore, and maybe he's going to try to focus on del delivering a little bit more power in each shot. Two body shots by Diaz, he goes back upstairs. Cotto seemingly very comfortable with his back against the ropes, throwing in combination as he has from the beginning. Diaz is definitely, definitely mounting the attack. He well, wants to get in there and fight. He throws some good right hands. He's actually caught Cotto with a couple right hands well, already. He's caught with him and Cotto caught him with a left hook. <laughs> yeah, he's not a big puncher, Lennox, if you haven't seen him before. But he is a volume puncher and an accurate puncher. And the second half of the first round is way more like the Juan Diaz we've seen before as he starts to let his hands go very freely. Cotto is another fighter who has shown you from the opening bell he wants to let his hands go as well. Both boxers are keeping the defense as tight as possible. Cotto has already gotten credit for throwing 133 punches in the first round. Make it 135. Make it 137. That's an astonishing first round for Jose Cotto, who wound up throwing 139 punches. Miguel Diaz, or excuse me, Juan Diaz, threw 62 punches and looked inactive by comparison. The, the, Definitely setting the pace for the fight, and that's what you need to do. Go out there and establish a pace. And, you know, this is something that we're going to be looking forward to the next few rounds. They speak Spanish in Diaz's corner. His trainer is his uncle, Evangelista Dakota. The, the left hand, be, be careful. When he comes near you, open up. Lower yourself and up, and make sure you counter punch real good. Come on, give me the bucket. 
And I use your uppercut when you get close. Okay. Watch, watch, watch the low blows, okay? Mm -hmm. Careful with the water, guys. Careful with the water. Yeah. All right, let's go, guys. Right, let's Come go, on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Back one. He has landed a number of hard rights, hard punches to the body. And here's a left hook that he landed well at the end of the round. Right there. Right on target. Jose Cotto, as I mentioned, threw 139 punches in the round, only landed 19 of them, but 15 of 84 power shots. When you throw 139 punches and double your opponent's output, you're probably going to win the round on most cards. You saw that Harold Letterman gave the round to Cotto. Ronnie Shields told Juan Diaz between rounds, throw uppercuts. One of your favorite punches, Lennox. Why does he want to see the uppercut? The uppercut, I, I think that that's where he feels that Cotto's more receptive. He's definitely going to get caught with the uppercuts because what he does is when he's trying to... Ooh, right good, hand. Good counter right hand by Diaz. He does that very well. He throws it very natural too. Yeah, and it looked like he just took like a little quarter step to the side and just dropped it right in. There's a good left hook to the body by Cotto. Clearly he doesn't dig the left hook to the body quite the same way his younger brother does. That's one of the bigger weapons in the sport. Miguel Cotto's left hook to the body. Jose Cotto is just busier than his brother and fights at a much faster pace. Now, when we asked him uh, about his style, he said his brother is the uh, boxes more than he does, and he is uh, true to his word. Oh. Good he exchanger. has starting to make some terrific contact, particularly the right hand. Yeah. Larry told you he's an accurate <laughs> puncher, and you're, I think you're seeing that, Lennox. Yeah. He's definitely putting pressure on Cotto. I think he feels that if he puts him against the ropes, he has a better chance. Why, why does Cotto want to be there? Uh, Cotto seems like he's comfortable he there. Does, he's not, he does, doesn't he? He's got those kind of short arms, and he can shoot little punches for yeah. him. I mean, his back's not totally against the ropes. He's, he's just close to the ropes. This is going to be a very hard fight to score. Judges are going to have to try to determine who is it who is really landing in quality amid all the large flurries of punches that have been thrown. Then you may get some judges that's going to really say, well, you know, Diaz is putting on the pressure. He's bringing the fight to Soto. You know, maybe we should score for him. That's why I think he wanted to back him up into the ropes. Yep. If the other guy's going to throw 130 punches, I'd rather have him throw him with his back against the ropes than in the center of the ring. Diaz is starting to do a better job of blocking punches with his elbows around the body. With our tremendously effective effects microphones in the ring, you can hear that Diaz has a kind of a Monica Seles grunt when he throws his punches. He's definitely throwing the punches with a lot of steam. Sound effects. Man! Two sizzling rounds. All right, how we feeling? All right, look, let's piss off for me first, okay? Uh, let's that first. Okay, now listen. Come on. It's so much easier when you just box this guy. Okay. All right, be on the inside with him the whole time. You don't on have to. On the inside, it's an even fight. All right. We don't want an even fight. Look. Jab, 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 jab. Double jab, triple jab, all right? Box him, just box him this round. Just listen to me this round, okay? I just want you to sit on the outside and box this guy this round, all right? Let him run. You can, you can throw, you can run combinations over. When you finish punching, step, step around. Down. And don't get up so high on me, okay? Oh, yeah. You get up a little bit too high. Start in my face, man. All right? Start in my face. Okay? Look. These are the kind of exchanges that make it difficult to score rounds like this, in part because you have judges around three parts of the ring, and some of them may have a better sh angle on that than others, and that's why we often get uh, different views of what's happened. Round three begins. I told you that Jose Cotto threw 139 punches in the first round. In the second round, he slowed down to under only 136. Maybe that's why Harold Letterman gave the second round to Diaz instead. He's thrown 275 punches in two rounds. Juan Diaz has been fairly busy, has thrown 131 punches in the two rounds combined. That's fewer than Cotto threw in either of the two rounds. But of course, 
You throw 275 punches in the first two rounds, Lennox. You got to wonder how you're going to be in rounds 11 and 12. Well, oh, this is what we're going to have to see later on. But I think he just needed that first round to really get, get all those punches out. Now he can really settle down into the fight like he's supposed to. Cotto pressuring Diaz into the corner. Tries to load up on the right hand of the body. Diaz, short, tight punches upstairs in a flurry. Just like that, Cotto coming back, trying to keep punching through Diaz's guard. So much for boxing. Now this is a fight. <laughs> Diaz Good is straight some, right hand. Yeah, he's throwing some great punches. Great combinations right now. And if Juan Diaz had real power, Lennox, it'd be a holy terror. Oh, yeah. Well, if he had real power, he probably wouldn't be showing, throwing as many punches. Well, he's throwing punches like he's got real power. There's a lot of effort into the punches. He's making, like you yeah. said, he's making a lot of noise, and he's throwing it with conviction. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. But he's got the quicker hands. Where, whereas Cotto seems to throw stronger punches, he has the quicker hands. And neither one seems capable of hurting the other one with one punch. Well, when you commit a lot to every individual punch, you're more likely to throw one punch at a time. Co Throwing combinations is a skill that you have to bring through your consciousness all the time. Cotto's more relaxed in there when he's throwing punches. You know, later on, this is definitely going to be a factor. He's, you know, he's more precise when he's throwing, throwing his punches. Right now, he's, he's trying to lower the guy's hands. Diaz's his hands by hitting him to the body. And Diaz gets in two more right hands upstairs. Cotto nods at him as if to say, yeah, I've seen you land your right hand. I'm going to try to focus on your body some more. Diaz tightening those elbows against his rib cage to guard against Cotto's body punching. Cotto does exactly the same thing as Diaz tries to dig his left hook to the body. I see, a, I have a slight perception that Cotto might be getting a little tired. Could be one. see Diaz's parents and you see the agony of the boxing mother <laughs> well you know, she doesn't have the level of calm that I've seen in Violet Lewis over the years uh, Lennox of course your mother who's a huge boxing fan Never looked exactly like that during a fight, I don't think. Uh, no, she was a little more comfortable with what her, you were accomplishing. Her loved one's in the ring, and he's fighting for his life, and she's definitely concerned, like any true mother should be. And, uh, you know, it's hard It's hard for mothers to, you know, watch their sons out there fighting, and somebody's trying to hit, okay, hit their son. So, but, uh, you know, this is something that all boxers' mothers go through. And some handle it different than others. Is this why you didn't get married until your boxing <laughs> career was over? My mother actually came to the gym and watched me, so she was kind of used to it. So when she came to the fight, you know, it was like something she's seen before. Total in round three, Diaz landing 23 out of 73 as he boosts his punch output just a little bit. Cotto that time threw 123 punches, was given credit by CompuBox only for landing 15 of them. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, two rounds to one. 29, 28, the baby bull Juan Diaz. Jim, in round one, you couldn't take it away from Miguel Cotto. He just punched and punched and punched and punched. He won the round, definitely. I, I don't think the judges could take that away from him. But in rounds two and three, Juan Diaz started to lay that left kick to the body more frequently. He started to box like Ronnie Shields wanted to do. Gets in a jab every now and then. And certainly, he's landing real, real good hooks. Two to one, Diaz. Now, I think if, you, if there's one quality in Juan Diaz that's really rough on the opponent, it's his ability to fire combinations in rapid fire succession. One, two, three, four, five punches in a matter of seconds, and, and that's fast hands. Yeah, well, the, the thing he's doing is keeping his hands close. He's not throwing any wide shots. They're all straight punches, which, which is a great because, you know, inside fighting, you want to throw some straight shots because whether it's 
around how Shots gets there f first. It's actually always a straight punch that always gets to the chin. Yeah. By and large, those short, straight, quick punches are not only better for your offense, they're much better for your defense as well. Yes. He's mixing it up now, Diaz, by going to boxing and just shooting his jab out for the last 30 or 40 seconds. Incidentally, Kenny Bayless, athletic, physically active, rising tide here in Las Vegas among Nevada referees. Diaz is throwing some good jabs, and this is what you need to do because it is setting him up for all the other punches that he can throw. Yeah, and, and as we watch Toto uh, more, he's more of a hooker, and these straight punches are starting to tell. And, and is it my imagination, or have Cotto's hands slowed down considerably since the beginning of the fight? Oh, I, I think that he's trying to defend himself. And at the end of the last round, he seemed to be slowing down. And another good right com or uh, left-right combination, one-two at the end of the round, by Juan Diaz. We're between the fourth and the fifth. So easy when you're boxing. There's Miguel Cotto, who is doing expert commentary on uh, a okay. world feed broadcast just a couple of chairs right, right. down the, the ring from us. All I need from you right now is for you to jam. Okay? With uh, Mario Solis and Raul Marquez. Marquez was former 154-pound world champion who uh, was Oscar Deloy's roommate at Barcelona in 1992 at the Olympic Games. And has started a comeback. As a middleweight? Another comeback. Well, he wants to get back to 54. He feels it's a wide open division. And he's scheduled to have a fight soon. Well, we've seen him in the ring against Shane Mosley. We saw him in the ring against Jermaine Taylor in what we thought was his last fight. We saw him in the ring years ago against Fernando Vargas in the fight in which Vargas won a world championship. Combi box numbers in round four. Diaz 25 out of 67. His connect percentage is going up. Cotto dropped to 93 thrown punches in that round, only landed 10. And uh, Diaz's competitive margin is growing early in the fight, as with each passing round, he seems lacks a little bit more in command of the combat. Yeah, th there's definitely a, uh, a speed difference between both boxes. Diaz definitely has a speed over Cotto. Yeah, Koto. and it looks like Cotto. Lennox now wants to box with him as he's being boxed. And I don't know that that's the best idea because Diaz is so much quicker. Oh, he's definitely one step ahead when it comes to the speed and that jab. That jab is definitely effective. Diaz has quick hands, landing more and more accurately with each passing round. Now Cotto comes back with a good body shot, another one. Diaz says, aha, I'll show you how to throw the body shot. Diaz, Cotto definitely has heavy hands out there. When he throws a punch, you know, it may seem slow, but when it hits you, it's heavy. Whereas Diaz's punches are more stinging than yeah. thudding. Yeah, that's a classic tough to judge situation when it comes to the judges. You know, do you go for the power puncher or do you go for the one that's yeah, well, showing if, the speed? But if the power puncher isn't hurting the other guy, how do you know it's a power punch from the judge's point of view? Absolutely, the noise. In front, in front, that's right. Well, that kind of subjectivity, the questions about how to score, those are among the reasons that Back in the day when George Foreman was sitting where Lennox sits, he used to always say, jab. If you have a jab, the sport gets a lot easier. Yes, definitely. 
Look at Diaz throw the five punch combination. Cotto comes right back at him. Reaching and searching. Yeah, Cotto shows that competitive instinct so common to fighters. When Diaz lands a combination, hits him three or four times, Cotto wants instantly to retaliate. I guess every single fighter alive knows that feeling. Well, just, just, just think of it. His kid brother has a title for whatever it's worth and is celebrated as one of the best young fighters in the world. I mean, this is really important to him. This is important to his soul. Cotto showing stern resolution, but Diaz has more technical skill. And here is Floyd Mayweather. Speaking of technical skill, the number one pound for pound fighter in the world arrived about 20 minutes ago. He has been exceedingly relaxed in the build up to the fight. All you need to see is the smile right there to understand how comfortable Floyd Mayweather is amid the big fight atmosphere. This is someone who grew up to be in the ring. And uh, of course, we know that all three of his uncles were professional fighters, two of them, or excuse me, both his uncles and his father have been professional fighters. Two of them, Floyd Mayweather Sr.'s father, and Roger, his uncle, have trained him. Roger is the trainer right at this moment of the consensus best fighter in the world, Lloyd Mayweather, fighting Zab Judah later on tonight in the main event. Average punches per round through the fifth round. Diaz, 20 out of 69, 29%. That percentage is going up. Cotto, 17 out of 116, 15%. That percentage is gradually, slightly dropping. This round will get us to the midway point in the fight if they complete it. Well, they've tested each other going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the first several rounds. Now they're looking to fight a different kind of fight, modifying what they did. You know, because of the difference in the two fighters and, uh, and most particularly because of all the promise Diaz shows with his hand speed and his technical skill, we've talked about power over and over. Power Lennox is one of the mysteries of the sport because, as we've seen so many times, there are some guys whose bodies say to you, he should have great power, and they don't. And there are some guys whose bodies say, he shouldn't have any power, and they do. You were a great power puncher. Did you think it was about your sheer strength, your leverage, your timing? What was it? I think it was just the speed of my hands and the weight of my hands. That equals, that equals power. And, uh, you know, some boxers can generate a lot of power, some boxers can't. And some, you know, you get all kinds of different boxers out there. Some boxers that can take punches, and some boxes that can't take punches. James Tony with middleweight-sized hands. Impossible ever to throw a real heavyweight power punch with those hands? Yeah, but, you know, he can throw some punches that can sting. I've seen him throw an overhand right hand. It's like a, a, a pitcher's, right. pitcher's like, pitch. Like Nolan Ryan coming over the top of the fastball, yeah. yeah. Well, they're going back right into the pit here. All right, back to the fight at hand. 109 to go in the... Sixth round, and they move back to the ropes to trade shots. And those are well chosen body shots for Diaz. Body, 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 body. Not a single punch upstairs in this sequence by Diaz except for the uppercut right there. But Cotto has come back with energy in this round. It might have looked like he was fading, but he is fighting back. Oh, and I see all those body punches. It occurs to me that Diaz may be thinking, all right, I'm moving ahead on the scorecards. I'm going to be putting in a position where he's going to have to go for a knockout. I'll throw some more body shots and reduce his power. Well, the only thing, the only thing that's the problem with that is he has to hit him in the body. If he's hitting his arms, he's not really affecting the, the puncher. All he's doing is affecting his energy levels. And it's important if he's boxing, to, if he's punching to the body, it's that he gets through, that he actually hits him to the body. Diaz went upstairs while Cotto was going to the body in that exchange. And both fighters get some punches through in the last 10 seconds of the round. I don't know how they take that. Zab Judah, Brooklyn Zone, former world titleist at 140 pounds, held the Unified Welterweight Championship at all the belts. 
and took a fight against Carlos Baldemir, a South American fighter with nine losses and with no real knockout power in January. He was a 20 to one betting favorite to win the fight. And Judah showed up in less than superb condition, faded in the late rounds and was beaten by Baldemir. Now, because Valdemir only wanted to pay a sanctioning fee to one governing body, the belts were distributed, and Judah still has a welterweight title belt. <laughs> He'll be giving it up tonight if Mayweather beats him. Mayweather says that means something to him, though most ringside experts say, why should that belt mean anything? You know, we could understand it if the belt had been vacated, but the idea that a fighter should lose in a fight and come out with his championship it's so crazy, you don't even know where to begin. Speaking of crazy, about. well, not exactly. Harold, how do you have it through seven? <laughs> okay, Jim, 59, 55, five rounds to one, Juan Diaz. Jim, I'll tell you about judging boxing. You got it, yeah, concentration is the key to the whole thing. This is not a hard fight to score, but you got to concentrate, you got to watch every blow, you can score this fight. Second thing, uh, a, a boxing judge, the only thing he can ask is that he's competent and that he's honest. I think we have three of those right here. What he is a very, very tough guy to beat, fighting on a dime, staying in close, never clinches, and he's landed tremendous body shots, landed the hardest shots. They are fighting right above us, and for a little while there, they were fighting as though in a phone booth. What an effort by both fighters, Lennox. Has, has there been a clinch in this fight? They're definitely not clinching, no. They're working well together. Welch under the right eye of Cotto. Cotto. That left hook and the jabs doing it. Big left hook upstairs by Diaz. Work out, work out. I think Diaz has changed the fight around. He just wants to dog him right now. I think he, he feels that he can get to him with some punches, and he's getting to him with some punches, so he's, he just wants to stay on top of him right now. He should definitely go back to his jab, because that was working for him, and then go back in. Like I said, the jab sets everything up, and, uh, you know. So if he just wants to dog him right now, but you, but you can't dog him all the time because you'd get exhausted, right? Right. When he doesn't dog him, that's where the jab comes into play, which he's doing now. Yeah, well, he's showing a versatility uh, that was not always part of his weaponry. I mean, Diaz is showing that for segments of the round, he can just stand and jab. And for other segments, he can just go inside and do that. Oh. <laughs> and I think one of the things that Lennox is saying to us is that Diaz has a pretty good fighting mind in addition to all his other qualities. Yeah, he throws some great combinations out there. Quick punches, straight punches, and he's actually getting through. You know, the first two don't get through, but the last three do. Solid left hook inside by Cotto, but as has been the pattern for a few rounds now, Cotto taking more leather than he's able to dish out. Diaz's greater hand speed and greater accuracy. Cotto digging hard with the right hand to the body. Trying to take away some of Diaz's speed by hammering him to the body. Diaz just keeps going. The 22-year-old Houston fighter is in terrific oh. fighting shape despite a long layoff. Diaz is throwing some great punches, catching Koto. Get some tape! Get some tape on the glove! Working. All right, I got you. The water bucket, the water bucket. He got it, he got it, we got it. You need that? I got it right here, right in front of you, Juan. Spit in there. Come on. How we feel? All right, you boxing good, baby. Look, every time you get it, every time you, hold up. Every time you get it, there you go, dry it off a little bit. Look. What you doing like that? Yeah, keep it like that. Look. Keep. The jab going on the outside. When you're inside, hey, keep punching and stepping around. Okay? okay? Keep punching and stepping around. That's what I need, okay? okay. Give me a drink. Keep it tight. All right. Keep it tight, boy. Okay. Round eight at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. The young man in the light blue trunk, 22-year-old Juan Diaz from Houston, Texas, is the holder of a lightweight title belt. A man in the black trunks, Jose Cotto of Puerto Rico, 
is an unbeaten fighter, 28 wins, no losses, looking to make the same kind of mark in the sport that his younger brother Miguel has already made. That is the mark of a star. Chopping right hand across the top by Diaz, and another one. Ronnie Shields in the corner was giving some good advice to Diaz, telling him definitely when he's on the outside, throw that jab, because he's being very effective with it. So he definitely shouldn't move away from that. Although he's landing right hand leads here, and a little left hooks inside. There's certainly a lot of variety in Diaz's offensive arsenal. He can throw all the punches. With accuracy and speed. He's doing a great job right now. And as many times as Cotto has hit him in throwing an average of 100 plus punches per round, only on two or three occasions has Diaz gotten caught flush with something upstairs. By and large, he's too quick to get hit with the big shots on the chin. And you definitely don't want to get hit with the big shots on the chin because uh, this is the sport of boxing, the sweet signs. Hit and don't get hit. Make a miss and make him pay. There's that job that's so effective. Really has been effective in this round and in the last two or three rounds before that. Cotto trying to dig a left hook to the body. Diaz's footwork has been superior and Juan has been able to stay out of vulnerable positions while finding many opportunities to hit Cotto flush upstairs. Just landed a little left hook. Not a lot of power, but put the leather on the target. Good uppercut by Cotto. Cotto hasn't really changed anything about his boxing right now. He's still trying to do the same thing, trying to punch through the body of Diaz and, and trying, basically trying to wear him down and catch him with a good punch. Now he's trying that crab defense. Didn't really work too well. It was an even fight for the first couple of rounds, but since that time, Cotto has distanced himself, or excuse me, Diaz has distanced himself from Cotto again. Accurate combinations, fast hands, a good thought process, the ability to stay away from Cotto's big shots. Good uppercut by Diaz. Come on, deep breaths. Come on. Deep breath through the nose. We got four rounds to go. You need to win the last four rounds, so there'll be no doubt. Another look at uh, Juan Diaz's parents. Now they've they've changed positions. She moved from one seat over, and he switched with her. Uh, it, probably a superstition of some sort. No, she just wants to get closer to the room. She wants to see what's going on. She, uh, you know, that position that she was in earlier, she couldn't see too much, but now she can see more. One seat over, a better look. I got it. Okay. Ready now for round nine of a scheduled 12. And uh, sort of appeared there as though Diaz's mom is getting a little bit more comfortable with her, uh, her son's control of the fight, making a little bit more noise than she was before. Phone booth action again. They <laughs> trade body shots back and forth. Diaz is the first to turn and go upstairs, and now Cotto tries to match him. So doesn't really want to give up too much ground right now. Well, they're, they're pretty happy with themselves just boxing in the phone booth, like Jim says. Cotto following Diaz around the ring. And 
Diaz choosing some periods of time to wait, catch his breath a little bit, let Cotto punch against his arms and shoulders, and then rapidly flurrying from time to time to get in his combinations. I don't know that we've seen any real sense of urgency in Jose Cotto's corner yet. Maybe Evangelista Cotto, his trainer, thinks that Jose is getting along evenly here and is still in the fight in such a way that he can leave him to do what he's going to do. And you wonder if at some point in these late rounds you're going to hear Evangelista Cotto say to Jose, all right, look, you've lost a lot of rounds, it appears. You're behind. You want the trainer to say that to you, Lennox, when that's the situation? Absolutely. You, you definitely want to know what's going on in the fight. So we've seen some situations in recent years when trainers just let their fighters keep fighting, despite an obvious situation like that. Papa Trinidad comes to mind. Yeah. Jack Mosley did it with Shane. It's important for a boxer to know what's happened. Good right hand by Diaz. Huge. It's important for a boxer to know what's going on in, in the fight while he's in there, because, you know, the trainer has a different eye. Another big right hand by Diaz. And, you know, he definitely wants to give that information to the boxer. So, you know, for me, I always wanted to know if I'm behind so I can really pick it up in the next round. Did Emmanuel Stewart tell you one night in Madison Square Garden that you absolutely had to win the first round against Ray Mercer? Yes. <laughs> you and, had no choice. And I went out and did it. That's did the right. job. I reacted. This is a championship fight. Come on, deep breath. Well, come on, Jose. We gotta get going. You gotta let, let your hands go with power. We can do it. This is the championship rounds here now, okay? Okay. Three rounds. Ten rounds. Three rounds, all right? We got three rounds left now, okay? Everything, everything is good, baby. Just give me a deep breath, let him slow. Okay, look, look. Body and uppercut. Body and uppercut, then walk him around. Body and uppercut, then walk him around. Okay? Comedy box numbers average per round. Diaz 23 out of 73. Goto 15 out of 115, which means that he is averaging 100 missed punches per round. That'll wear you out. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Look at you. 88, 83, seven rounds to two, one Diaz. Now, Jim, this kid's not even breathing hard. I, I mean, it's incredible. To fight him toe-to-toe, -to -toe, yeah, to fight in the middle of the ring on a dime is virtually impossible. The kid's got a tremendous right hand. Really hard uh, left hook to the body, and he's got real good defense. He blocks so many of Cotto's shots. Cotto seems to be losing the step of the shots, but he's still coming forward. Seven to two, Diaz. Stop, stop, step back. If you took the punching power of his good friend Rocky Juarez, and somehow put it into Diaz's gloves, he might be unbeatable. He's doing a good job. He needs to go out there and, and still stick with that job like he's doing. Throw that right hand. Keep moving around. That's what he's doing. And we did hear Evangelista Cotto between rounds saying to Jose Cotto, you got to come forward, you got to throw with power. You're going to have to get on the ball. But... One of the reasons that Diaz is winning is because he's landed his jab at about a 25 or 30 percent clip. And Cotto's only landed by CompuBox count 7 percent of his jabs. You see what happens with the jab? When you throw the jab like that, you stop your opponent from making his move. So you stop him right in his tracks. And that's what Diaz has done on many occasions. Stops him, stops him right in his tr tracks with that jab. Why hasn't Cotto been able to neutralize it? Lennox, throw something over it. it it's or difficult. Under it. What you do, what you have to do, you have to jab with the jabber and try and get your jabs in there quicker. 
But I think he's just one step behind. It's just the speed is not there for Kodo. That's it. I, I mean, I got to agree. It, it's, it's simply Lennox that Diaz is too quick. He fires the jab, and he brings it back into defensive position before Kodo gets a chance to react. And it's a situation, it's a situation where he's not throwing one punch. He's throwing, like, five punches. So when Kodo's waiting for him to, you know, finish his repertoire of punches, and he's coming back, he's getting a jab in his face. Kodo sure isn't getting off the 100 punches per round anymore as he continues to chase Diaz around the ring and pay a price for it. I think that takes a lot of energy out of Kodo when he's mounting an attack, trying to throw some punches, and then gets hit by a jab. It just stops him right in his tracks, and then he has to restart again. Baby. Two rounds left. Get the shots, Derby. Get the shots. Give me a rinse first, okay? Give me a rinse. Give me a rinse. One. He can't handle you inside, he can't handle you on the outside, okay? Now look, I don't have no problem with you fighting in close, okay? Hold up. Okay? I ain't got. Hey, Junito! We're still in the fight. You're listening to what we're saying? Come on, but you need to put some pop power. Move to the side and throw it backwards. Come on, without being off balance. In balance, throwing the jab and hard punches. Round 11. And six minutes of chances left for Jose Cotto, who would appear to be falling behind on the scorecards against Juan the Baby Bull Diaz of Houston, Texas. If you've not seen Diaz before, he is a 22-year-old world titleist in the lightweight division. And a guy who will be hoping for greater prominence in future years. Of course, the two biggest names in the lightweight division in recent years have been Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales. Diaz hasn't been in position to fight either one of those guys. And of course, nobody really wants to fight Jose Luis Castillo with the possible exception of Corrales because Castillo fights in the 135 pound division and has the body of a junior middleweight. Cotto needs to be definitely picking it up this round, fighting with more urgency if he really wants to win this fight. But his sense of urgency seems to have been dropping in recent rounds as opposed to rising. Well, I think maybe his energy is. I mean, that would just be normal. And, you know, do you get the feeling watching these two that, that Cotto looks like a man and Diaz still looks like a boy, and he's got that, that boyish quickness about him. There's an yeah. earnestness in everything that Cotto does, like a mature. I mean, you can look at Cotto and look at his body, and you can tell his body's mature. Look at those calf muscles. Whereas Diaz is smooth all over. Yeah. That's where them speed muscles come into effect. Comes in like Cotto is lifting some weights or something. Very, very nice work there by Cotto. One of Cotto's better body flurries in a while. But that, of course, Lennox brings up a, a point that we've touched on so many times over the years. That classically sculpted, cut up body, the weightlifter's body that looks so fabulous in a magazine ad, that's not necessarily what a boxer wants. No, you want those long, fluid muscles, uh, speed muscles. Muscles that can react really quick, especially because that's what's going to help in the fight. Those endurance muscles, those are, those are really what helps boxers, good boxers. And, and Diaz told us yesterday that he does not do traditional road work. He does not go out and run. He works the Stairmaster in the gym, and he swims. And I think if he continues to succeed, Lennox, we're going to see more fighters swimming in conditioning. Oh, because yeah, he's, he's got those loose muscles, and he's so quick. And he's in good shape. Well, you heard Harold Letterman marveling at the stamina Diaz has shown in the fight. Remember, we're in the 11th round of what has been an all-out sustained offensive assault on the part of both fighters. Hey. 
tranquilo, ok? Ok. Calma, calma, siéntese, respira. That's the way to go. Come on, sit down. Vamos. Respira por favor, caballito. Come on. Ese tipo está entregado. That guy is finished. He's finished. You got him. He can't hold up to you. He can't stand up to you. Now we're going to the last round. We're going to close this with big numbers. Let's step jabs, okay? When he get close, three three punches. I want three punches. That's what he don't want. Give me three punches. That's all I want. Three punches, and then stay down low and walk around. Okay? This is it, baby. Okay? Give me a deep breath. Everything is good, man. Everything is good, all right? Hands high. Give me some head movement, okay? All right? Ladies and gentlemen, after 11 world championship rounds of go to go. There you see Mr. and Mrs. Diaz again. Mrs. Diaz works in a laundry in a hotel. Mr. Diaz works in a company that creates water filters, I believe. Working class people came here to make their way and their son is making his way. Compi box numbers in the 11th. Cotto 23 out of 121. Diaz 18 out of 68. Cotto landing 17 of his 54 punches in the last minute of that round. Harold gave the 11th round to Jose Cotto, which if it squares with the other judges, will tighten up the fight just a little bit. Oh. Look at the display of hand speed and sustained combination punching by both fighters. Whoa. It looks like Diaz has the best of that. He's doing a great job throwing some great you know, fast punches. Right. Trying to close the show, not taking the decision for granted. And Cotto is hanging right in there with him. And the fans are getting their money's worth in a huge way. Diaz has landed so many flush right hands on Cotto. Let's go, the kid says. Let's go, the young man says. Well, once again, if you've just tuned in and you hear us talking about Cotto, this is not the rising star of the 140-pound weight class, Miguel Cotto, you're looking at, but rather his older brother, Jose Cotto. What they share in common is that both are unbeaten fighters. Jose Cotto brought a 28-0 record into the ring against, against similarly unbeaten Juan Diaz. Somebody's O is going to go, as they say. And through most of the fight, it has looked as though it is Diaz who is going to be the winner and Cotto who is going to have no O. Except, of course, the ones in his name. Got the perfect glory by Diaz. And I love the way he's listening to Ronnie Shields. Three punch combination, and then he backed right back out. Ronnie Shields has not been a lucky trainer. He's had a lot of thankless assignments in his training career, such as David Tua against Lennox Lewis. <laughs> He's a great guy. You keep hoping and praying that Ronnie Shields is going to get that transcendent fighter who will give him a chance to experience the kinds of things that Freddie Roach and Buddy McGirt have enjoyed in the last few years. Maybe Juan Diaz is that fighter. Diaz is definitely finishing the show. He's looking good. Oh, and he's, ca he's catching. Oh, he's, got, he's hurt, too. He is hurting Cotto with a tremendous... I don't think there's going to be an off round, though. Tremendous drop down by Juan Diaz, the baby bull. And Cotto's cornerman lift him up in the air, but not very convincing under the circumstances. Uh, well, this alone uh, makes it a good night at the fights. And this is exactly what we expected. Uh, but Diaz uh, looks, looks again like the prodigy we think he is. But I don't know how many more of these fights his mother can stand. he can stand or his parents could stand. His father definitely looks relaxed out there. You know, he has full confidence in his son, and uh, I believe he feels his son won this fight. 12th round action here. Juan Diaz and Miguel Cotto trading shots, and... By and large, Lennox, I guess Diaz getting the best of it, right? Absolutely. Just this great combination punching. Four or five punch combination straight on the button. You know, he's hitting him flush. 
and ducking the right hand. In the 12th round by CompuBox numbers, Diaz 41 out of 123, Cotto 25 out of 159. The 41 landed punches for Diaz, the most in the fight. The 123 thrown punches for Diaz, the most in the fight. They threw 282 punches together in the 12th round. That's worth the money. And Lennox Lewis talked throughout the fight about how effective Juan Diaz's jab was. He threw 45 jabs in the 12th round, Lennox, and landed 12 of them. That's what set up the power shots. Definitely. I mean, he did a great job. He boxed on the inside, boxed on the outside, and he won both. One on the inside, one on the outside. Only when he was boxing inside, it seemed more of an even fight until he started showing his speed. All right, Michael Buffer is holding on to the uh, judges' scorecards at this moment. Let's hear what they were. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Las Vegas, we have just witnessed two undefeated lightweight warriors go toe to toe for 12 rounds a round of applause but somebody's oh must go bill graham scores at 116 to 112 paul smith 117 111 glenn drawbridge 118 to 110 to the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, still the reigning WBA lightweight champion of the world, Juan the Baby Bodilla. Final copy box numbers between Juan Diaz and Jose Miguel Cotto. Show Diaz landing 52 more. I think that there's a graphic mistake here because I believe Cotto threw 1,501 punches in the fight. So let's get rid of the graphics because they are in error. Still to come tonight, 